So in continuation to what we covered in the previous video around supports, resistances and trend lines, it is very important for one to understand what are the different types of charts which one can plot using the charting software. So I'll be discussing the various types of charts that one can plot and the most widely used charts in this session. So as you are able to see on my screen, the first and the most basic form of chart is a line chart. If you remember, any given stock price will have four price points at a given point of time. You will have an open price, you will have a high price, you will have a low price and you will have a close price which is typically referred to as the OHLC. But when it comes to a line chart, you will be using any one of these four price points to plot your price movement. And by default, it is the closing price. This line chart, which is based on the closing price typically, will help you determine the overall trend of the stock price movement. Because the candlestick chart conveys four different price points to you, whereas a line chart conveys only one particular price point to you. So as you can see on my screen, the line chart would be a simple line that is drawn over a given period of time, which indicates how the stock price moved in that particular time period. And it is useful to identify trends and uses only one price point as we spoke earlier. The second chart type is known as your OHLC chart or also referred to as your bar chart in which we take care of all the four price points that we spoke about, the open, the high, the low, the close. So if you see here, the left dash or the left extension to the line is your open price. The overall line tells you the high and the low. The top is your high, the bottom is your low and the right dash or the right extension is your close price. So if you see here in this particular candle, this is your open price. This level is your high, this particular level is your low, and this level is your close price. So the advantage of a OHLC or a bar chart over a line chart is that it reflects all the four price points and gives you the complete information. But it is not that visually appealing to identify the overall trend movement. That is why your line charts are also extensively used by chartists or technicians. So moving on, the next variant of a chart can be a Japanese candlestick chart, which is typically a better representation of the bar chart or the OHLC chart that we have covered. It is more visually appealing as compared to the OHLC chart and still conveys all the complete price movement information that is a open, high, low and close in the same fashion that a bar chart conveys. So if you are able to see my screen, this is how a typical Japanese candlestick chart will look like which is a better representation of the bar chart and represents all the four available price points for a given period. The current candles, however, are not related to your previous candles, which is similar to your bar chart, because if you are looking at a daily chart, a daily time frame chart for any given stock, that particular day's candle will give you the open, high, low, close for that particular day only. And Japanese candlestick charts are the most widely used chart type when it comes to technical analysis and charting. Now coming to how to interpret a typical candle in a Japanese candlestick chart. As you can see on my screen, the Japanese candlestick can either be a green candle or a red candle. If it is a green candle, it simply means that their close price is higher than your open price. And conversely, if it is a red candle, it would mean that your close price is below your opening price. And each of these candles, be it a green candle or a red candle, will typically be accompanied by a wick on the top and a wick on the bottom. So if it is a green candle or a red candle, the top wick would mean that this is the high price point for that day and the lower wick implies the low price point for that given period or day. So if you see on my screen, this is a green candle I have where this is my open price and the close price is higher than the open price. The upper wick signifies the day is high and the lower wick signifies the lowest price which it touched on that given day. And conversely, in case of a red candle, your open was at this particular level and the close was below the open price. 
the stock made a high at this level and the stock made a low at this level as signified by the wicks. Two very important things to note when we talk about Japanese candlesticks. Point number one, the length of the body of the candle. The bigger the length of the body, the better is the meaning and significance of that candle. And point number two, the length of the shadows or wicks that is there on these candles. If you have candles with very long wicks on the top or on the bottom, it means that the price was more volatile in that particular day or particular period because there is a wide difference between the low price point and high price point of that day. So be mindful of these two parameters when you are looking at candlestick charts. The length of the body of the candle and the length of the wicks of the candle. So on my screen, I have an example of a candlestick chart of Shoba Developers Limited. So if you see here, these green candles have more meaning as compared to these small body green candles. And whenever these big body candles are accompanied with volumes, these have more significance as compared to your candles, which are not accompanied by higher volumes. Now, I would also want to talk about a interesting chart type known as Hekinashi chart types. These are a modification on the Japanese candlestick charts, but convey a great deal of information when it comes to charting. So let's try to understand what is the underlying concept behind these Hekinashi candles and how is it different from a typical or a conventional Japanese candlestick. Hekinashi candles are very similar to Japanese candles in terms of its look and feel, but it is a modified version of your Japanese candlesticks and it is calculated in a different fashion. For example, in case of your Japanese candlestick, it is only giving you the price point for that particular period, the open, the high, the low, the close. Whereas in case of a Hekinashi candle, it is also taking some information from the prior day's candle, which Japanese candlesticks don't do. So that is why we say that Hekinashi candles are a modified version of the Japanese candles. So for calculation of your Hekinashi candles, the close price is calculated as the average of the open, high, low and close for that period. The open price is calculated as the average of the open and close price for that period. The high price point or the highest point for that particular period is calculated as the max of the derived open, close and the high for that day. And conversely, the low is calculated as the minimum of the open, close and low for that particular period or day. So talking further about Hekinashi candles, it will give you a smoother view as compared to a Japanese candlestick conventional chart because it is also taking information from the prior period candle which Japanese candlestick charts don't. Also, one can try using the Hekinashi charts to get some advantage or edge in their trading decisions. For example, if I take a particular stock, if I take a long position on Shoba, let's say, at a defined breach of my resistance zone, then I know that I have taken my entry and I know my stop loss. But if I don't know when to exit or if I have not defined my target, then I can make use of Heikinashi charts to define my target and to know when I should exit my position. So we'll take one example and see how we can plot Heikinashi charts on tv.dhan.co and how we can use this particular chart type to our advantage to know when to exit from a position. So if you are able to see my screen, I have the chart of Shoba developers on my screen on a daily time frame where I have defined my resistance level as 568 and my support level as 484. Now, assuming I take my long entry around this point, somewhere between 570 to 580 levels, I need to know how I should be timing or planning my exit. One way is I can use various tools like Fibonacci retracement to define my targets. Don't worry, we'll come to this particular topic as well in the subsequent videos. Otherwise, one simple way could be using Heikinashi charts. So if you go to this particular option on your charting screen, it will give you the option to plot bar charts that we have already covered. It will give you an option to plot the candlestick charts, which is here. It will give you an option to plot the line chart, which is typically based on the closing price. And it will also give you an option, which is your Heikin Ashi chart. So I'll select the Heikin Ashi chart here. So till the time 
the stock is going and giving me a green candle, I will not exit my position. And one more noteworthy observation is that all these candles after I have taken my entry don't have a lower wick, which means there is no price point as per the Heiki Nashi calculation that the price is going down but again coming up during the close. So if you notice carefully, all these candles, the Heiki Nashi candles which are formed after I have taken my entry, they don't have a lower wick available here, which is a clear indication of a strong bull grip. Which means, if I have taken my entry at around 560, 570 levels, then I should not exit this stock till this candle formation turns red. Which means, from a 570, 580 levels, my exit would be somewhere around 665 levels, roughly 15 to 20% gain in a matter of a few days to a few weeks. However, do remember that not all stocks will reward you in this given time frame. Some stocks can take a longer period to reward you when compared to other stocks. So the key is that you have to be patient and you have to trust and believe in your setup and studies. If you become impatient, you will not be able to trade and succeed in the market. Patience, discipline, practice and perseverance. These are the keys for successful trading or investing journey. So this is how we can toggle between the various chart types that is your bar chart or a candle chart, a line chart and a Heiki Nashi chart. And as we have covered in one example, we can also use Heiki Nashi charts to define my exit time when I have taken an entry in a given stock. Now these exit points can be dependent on the various time frames in which we are looking at the data. In case of a cash delivery trade, I prefer looking at the daily time frame. That is why in this example, we are looking at the chart on a daily time frame. But again, this is subjective and this will vary from one trader to another or one chartist to another. Always remember that each chartist will have his or her own way to define how to read the charts. I normally prefer looking at a daily time frame chart when it comes to cash equities but every chartist will have his or her own time frame. Some people also prefer looking at multi time frames that is more than one time frame to define their exit decisions. So you have to identify your area and your strength and play around that. And the only way to identify your strength would be practice, discipline and perseverance. So you practice more, you believe in your setup, you believe in the rules that you set and you follow them diligently you will be able to succeed in the stock markets.